Hey guys, Nick here from Nick's Taxes. And the past five days has been absolutely bonkers in terms of the stock market. If you haven't heard, there's stocks like GameStop, Nokia, Blackberry, AMC, Bed Bath & Beyond, Express, Koss. They've all seen huge amount of gains over the last couple days. And with those gains, there's also been some losses and just a roller coaster of volatility in the stock market. Some have come out on top and have made a lot of money. And if you are one of those people, we're gonna talk about taxes. Also, if you've lost money, we're also gonna talk about what that might mean for you as a Canadian. So if you've been trading these stocks as a Canadian, I just wanna talk about what it might look like for you on your 2021 taxes and beyond uh, as we look at holding and buying shares, especially US shares. Uh, but before we get into it, uh, just consider giving this a thumbs up for the information I'm about to give you and consider subscribing as I talk about personal tax, finance, and investing for Canadians, helping people get in touch with their money. But anyway, let's get into it. GameStop, if you're one of those people that have made like a thousand percent here, uh, congratulations. I hope that uh, you spend that money wisely. If you haven't um, already crystallized those gains, keep holding. I believe the squeeze is coming. This has been an amazing thing to see. But there's a lot of people asking, how do I buy stock or what does this look like? TFSA, non-registered, RSP, all that kind of stuff. And so in this video, uh, we're going to look into those kind of things so that way you're aware of what you're doing. A lot of people are going in uh, because the internet is going haywire and just starting investing and buying these stocks uh, and not really knowing the implications of what they might be doing in terms of what kind of account they're using, how much they're spending, and so on and so forth. So to get started, there are a couple different accounts here in Canada. They have There's an RSP, which is your Registered Retirement Savings Plan, your Tax-Free Savings Account, TFSA. There's also a non-registered savings plan. So when you open up, say, a Wellsimple account or a Robinhood or RBC Direct Investing or TD Ameritrade, whatever, uh, you're gonna choose likely one of those three accounts. And so within the RSP and within the TFSA, all your gains are tax exempt for the meantime. We'll start with the RSP. You're only taxed on the RSP when you withdraw money from that account. The thing with RSPs is if you lose money, you can't gain that contribution room back. RSPs, you gain contribution room through uh, your employment income each year or your earned income each year. So I don't recommend using an RSP for investing or for gambling in these kind of risky stocks. If you have, you know, I hope it goes well, but RSPs are not the place to do so. A TFSA, tax-free savings account, is another account that you gain contribution room each year as you're a Canadian resident. So you can only contribute up to the amount of room that you have available to you. But say you have $20,000 of contribution room and now your investments have peaked and they've hit $100,000. Even though your contribution room was $20,000, you can hold that $100,000 within the account because that's the amount of accumulation that has uh, been earned over this period of time. So you won't be penalized for having that much in your account. You will be penalized though if you go over your contribution limit in terms of contributing into that account. So you're only penalized when you over contribute into your account. So again, if say I had $10,000 of contribution space and I contributed $12,000 into my account to invest, I'm over by that $2,000 amount. The TFSA though, any gains that you earn within that TFSA are completely tax free. So say it goes to the moon and I have a million dollars, I can take that million dollars out tax free, no questions asked, no obligations, beautiful. The thing though within the TFSA again is if you lose out, you can't do anything with those losses and you've essentially lost that contribution space. You can't get that contribution space back in your losses. So there is a little bit of a risk there within the TFSA. I don't recommend gambling within the TFSA because again, you lose out on that space and if you're investing long-term, that space can be proven very valuable, especially when you look at compound interest and exponential growth. Next one is your non-registered account. That's your personal account. If you have any gains in this non-registered account, you will be taxed. And any losses though, you can use to offset any gains. So there's no limits here on a non-registered account. You can contribute as much as you want. You can make as much as you want, lose as much as you want, take, take it out at any time. 
no problem there. It's a non-registered account. There's no rules on contributions. If you're investing and you make money, you're taxed at capital gains rates, which means that 50% of the gains are going to be taxed at your marginal rates. So the best way to look at it is to look at a tax calculator. EY has a good one. It'll show you your marginal tax rate on capital gains. That number is obviously a little bit different than just your marginal rate for uh, employment income. And that's because, like I said, 50% of it is taxed. So if I made $100,000 uh, on a stock, I'll be taxed on 50% of that, which means $50,000 of my gain will be taxed and added to my taxable income. That taxable income gets considered when I'm looking at my tax rate for the year. So likely if you're in that top bracket and you're making, say you made a million dollars, you know, $500,000 is taxable, you're looking at about a 25% tax rate total as you'll likely be taxed at a 50% rate on 500,000. If you've lost out, unfortunately, uh, you can use those capital losses to offset any capital gains that you may have either this year, in a prior year, or future years. So if I lost, say, $10,000 and I crystallized that loss, and in another stock this year I've made $10,000, I'll claim both. So I can claim a $10,000 gain and a $10,000 loss offset so that way my total gains this year is zero. I can also take that $10,000 loss and apply it to a prior year in which I had capital gains or I can report this and it'll be able to carry forward into future years so that way next year hopefully I have some capital gains and I can use these losses now to offset those future capital gains. You can't do this with non-registered and, or sorry, you can't do this with your registered accounts like your TFSA and RSP. So I can't offset any gains that I've had in my RSPs or in my TFSAs. This is only in your non-registered accounts. The other nice thing is if you do have uh, trading fees, like a $9.99 trading fee or $5.99 trading fee, uh, you can claim those as well on your tax return. So I can report my, my sale and then I can also uh, report the expenses that I had for actually making that trade. So that's how those work. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And again, just give this a thumbs up. Uh, let me know if you have any GameStop stock or any of these meme stocks and how you've done so far. Uh, I personally have a little bit. I've been you know, following the ride. I think this week's gonna be an interesting one. But I wanted to make you guys aware of what's going on in terms of taxes as a Canadian um, as more and more people get into the hype of these uh, meme stocks. So thanks for watching again. Give it a thumbs up. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm gonna talk a lot in the next coming weeks about how to do your taxes because taxes are due at the end of April. So stay tuned. Make sure to subscribe, and as always, happy taxing.